looking to improve your life, brush up on your personal growth techniques, you are in the right place. Welcome to Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. Hello, everybody. This is Kevin Dunlap with Life's Little Lessons. And today I have a wonderful lady. We've been having some great conversations over the last few months. Her name is Anna Leonti. And she actually, she's a co-founder of a company called World Brand Company. She's a branding expert, works on logos on your website. We've got so much that I want to learn from her today. Without any further ado, Anna, welcome to our show today. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's my greatest pleasure to be talking with you again today on the show. And thanks a lot for inviting me. It's um, indeed a reward. It's very valuable to share everything that we were talking with you well, it's always a great pleasure if someone else will find it valuable. Well, it's good to see you again. And I know we've been conversing a lot over the last couple of months, and I've been enjoying that, and I'm looking forward to actually sharing some of that out with the public here. Um, Thank you. So, Anna, could you tell us a little bit about who you are and what is it that you do? I have many like, slashers under my name, first name and last name because I like to constantly reinvent myself and uh, ex- expanding uh, what I do and constantly learning things. But if I can define myself, that at the moment would be a journalist, a philanthropist, a personal branding coach. That is my greatest passion, which I was able to combine what I like the most and what I have my experience at is public relations, journalism, marketing, and a lot of psychology that I use a lot uh, working with people and uh, to make the difference in their life and professional and their public image. Okay. And, um, and how long have you been doing that for? Uh, it goes back to about over 10 years now. Um, when I was living and working in Russia, uh, when I studied uh, first English language and then I studied business, uh, it was Academy of Marketing and Management in Moscow, and then I opened my own company in Russia, in Moscow. We consulted CEOs of the company and did lots of communications between uh, the Russian businesses and their the partners in Europe. There was a lot of traveling. It was a really exciting time. And then I had, um, like, I was invited to the United States uh, as to speak at the board of business directors at Kalamazoo, Michigan in 2004 as a guest speaker of the month. And I was talking about business climate in Russia. And that was my first time when I actually came to the United States. New York City, where I first uh, saw the absolutely incredible views of Manhattan impressed me so much, the energy, the people, everything. So I had this dream, idea, the passion, how it's possible for me to one day to be living in the city like New York. So I was looking for many ways to do it. And I discovered that one way to do to uh, live in the big city is to study in school. So I applied to uh, several universities and I had a passion to study journalism because I always wanted to use English language as a tool to tell stories that can change the world, change people, make the difference. So that was the dream that required a lot of hard work. But then I was accepted to this university. I got my scholarship. And uh, then my journey in New York City started, um, which was incredibly exciting. And then I was doing an internship at United Nations and I was working there in the TV and multimedia department. And also after that, a population fund um, as a journalist. So it's been absolutely amazing and incredible experience. I know just when you just said you've done a lot from the branding, from the journalism. Uh, I know you're doing coaching now. You're doing, you're helping people with, you know, building their brands and their, their personal uh, yeah. images. Now tell us a little bit about that. Cause I know you're going to be traveling to Sri Lanka here soon. You're talking about possibly going to Cyprus as well as some other things. Uh, how, what is it that you do um, for the personal branding and how can the, the listeners or viewers benefit from some of the stuff that you are able to share? Mm-hmm. Uh, I create a business, this, the personal branding strategy for entrepreneurs, for people in career that want big promotion in their company, for public figures. Basically, that's the 
public image that they already have as a brand. So I do the full diagnostics, how they look online, what kind of impression they produce, what people think about them when they their name pops up, uh, what people associate them with. And I want to create a strategy for my clients that would make a big difference. And a, the audience, their target market, will see them as popular experts in their field. So we do the full diagnostic, then uh, we'll see what their social media looks like, what they're posting there, how, what kind of uh, image they have, uh, what they're saying about their own work, and how to express the best way what exactly they're doing. Uh, what kind of value, their unique and very authentic value that they have, how to make this known to the audience. Because a lot of times, from my experience, people underestimate themselves. They're so focused on what exactly they do, they don't know um, how their brand looks like. And nowadays, this is a reality that people, they do judge book by the cover, and the image is truly important. And of course, the professionalism is essential. But at the same time, people that have effective and powerful personal brand, they have tremendous advantage because nowadays we don't have much time to study about the person, their true values, how good they are. We just go with something that is truly on how this person can help us and what difference they can make. So the best way to express it and to really be effective and successful is to have personal brand, which is also really authentic because a lot of people are also doing the same thing. Everybody now is a coach. <laughs> so many people are doing business. So many people have a career in top management. Uh, a lot of people are uh, in politics. But what makes a difference? This is key. Being authentic, being totally true to yourself. You know, like Gary Vernichek, he's probably one of the best examples of being totally authentic, which doesn't mean perfect because it's something that people connect on much deeper level and being able to bring that to the audience, being authentic, but at the same time, being polished and create this better version of yourself. Uh, it's self-growing, a lot of self-development work, but it's also self-packaging as well. So being able not only to do the work on yourself to grow, but also to be able to present that and combine your value and your image in the best possible way. This is what I truly believe in, and this is what difference I want to make. And This is how I use uh, a lot of psychology, a lot of writing as a journalism to uh, create the, um, the best, well, to best express their achievements uh, and a lot of marketing and public relations. Now, when you're working with your clients, are you mainly like they're hiring you for the services and you're doing a lot of it for them or are you basically teach them how to do it so that they can go and do it on their own? I do both because uh, one of the most important factors of personal brand is consistency. Mm -hmm. That you cannot just do it only once. You have to continually repeat and remind yourself. But that's why authenticity plays such an important role. Because it's once you create a fake brand, as a lot of people think that's the way to go, then you cannot maintain it. In the long run, it's really hard work to to do the brand maintenance. So once you understand the principle, the basics of how everything works, once we make the uh, initial step together, then I'm teaching my uh, clients, giving them the strategy that they can use, that they can implement for their long-term career and being able to reinvent themselves if they need to or rebrand uh, years from now. So sometimes we, we work at a certain time, but then the, the, my clients, people that I work with, they come back to me. So we do rebranding together to make sure that we are still going in the same direction. And then as they're being authentic, they continue to use a strategy to implement that strategy in their life and in their work and continue doing that on their own. 
Okay. Because I, then how long does the process take? If so, if I were to hire you today, say, hey, I got, you know, I've got this new coaching business going on. If I were to hire you today um, and you were to say either you're still in New York City here with me here in Las Vegas or you're coming here to Las Vegas, what is the expected turnaround time of a, mm-hmm. of a new entrepreneur or, or new uh, business owner before they you know when they hire your services? Mm-hmm. Well, we live in such a unique time where we don't have to be at the same room Right. to really work together as we do now we have to we don't have to be in the same time zone we just have to be awake and all interviews internet makes it possible to mm-hmm. talk to people and work with them so once i study the person's uh, personal brand online everything that they have what, what kind of their first impression that often happens online before you even meet the person in real life then uh, we can work uh, from any part of the globe that we are in, uh, exchanging phone calls, messages, uh, emails, of course, where answer all the questions consistently. So it doesn't matter where I am, and that's what my lifestyle a lot is. I really like to travel, uh, meet new people, um, seeing different parts of the world, uh, having new experiences. But at the same time, I created business out of this lifestyle to make sure that I can uh, help as many people as I uh, can. And also I'm teaching my clients uh, things that I know so they can also teach. And uh, all together, we are making the difference in uh, the ways that people can present themselves. And I'm, I'm really realizing that myself right now just because of these interviews. I mean, right now you're three time zones away from me. Yeah. Uh, and you, you know, I've had other conversations with other people on this mm-hmm. show in other countries. And it's mm-hmm. so funny that this is how technology has come with say zoom or Skype for video conferencing or yeah. WhatsApp for telephone uh, conferencing mm-hmm. with, with those things uh, alone. We can be anywhere in the world and work with each sure. other uh, uh, mm-hmm. in real time. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes, it's a new trend, you know, that, that's um, uh, BOD, bring your own device. Basically, you can run the company from your cell phone. And uh, if you have a computer, if you have a connection to the internet, then you can work from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Especially if you really are the boss in your company. So that gives you a lot of freedom, a lot of Uh, different ways where it can be a lot more effective and combining uh, your business and your lifestyle as well. And I love these, these jet setters that are, that are, Mm -hmm. are going today. One of the first people I've interviewed on the show, a lady by the name of Galena Lapina. I don't know if you know her or not, but uh, it was just talking with her. I mean, she's constantly traveling. I mean, I, I think her house, which is in Seattle, she's, cause she's Russian. She was on episode number nine. And uh, she has her house completely rented out. And she's basically been, I think she's been living out of, like, say, a suitcase for, uh, I don't know how many months, probably a good 10 months to a year. I mean, she's in Mexico. She's in uh, France. She's in, uh, she's just traveling all over the world. And, you know, she's just, she just adjusts her clock to the clock of her clients. And that's when she's uh, performing. Other than that, she, like, you know, just go out and see what the world has to offer. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the lifestyle of that. And you're doing a lot of that yourself. Mm -hmm. I think it's traveling is an education because from every trip, we're constantly learning something and someone in the world is doing better than you, the same thing. They have different life experiences and also getting out of the comfort zone is great Uh, Mm -hmm. to uh, really knowing what you are capable of. And that's great to totally come to the country with a different culture and then you realize, well, I'm 20 years old. I'm a teenager now because I have to learn things all over again. Uh, it teaches you a lot of acceptance. And then you meet other professionals in your field who are doing similar things, but they're doing it differently. They have a different approach. They look at things differently. And seeing their things from their point of view, it's truly amazing because then I just realize there is no one way to uh, approach they're the same thing. You just have to look at it from different perspective, maybe combine several things and create something that is very unique, a unique blend from uh, different things. And that's what I was, what I'm always doing in my work. 
have to be open to new ideas, new people, but then create something on my own, very unique. And that's, I believe, makes it valuable. How did you get into personal branding uh, specifically? That was an interesting experience living in New York City and being a journalist, doing PR marketing, some promotional work. I was at the fashion show. It was years ago. And I met an amazing woman who had to be editor-in-chief of Vogue magazine of Germany. And we started having conversation. And then she mentioned then something that just going to the movie with a popcorn, for example, is not like contributing to her personal brand, which for me was a new word, which I thought the brand is could be for the companies or for the clothesline. I didn't think that could be for the person. And then I came home and then something clicked. Something was truly inside me, I just realized that I really have to learn more. What is this thing? What does it really exist? Like what people are talking about? And then since then, I realized in New York, in other big cities, New York, London, and probably Paris, other places, people are talking, professionals are talking about personal brand, that it does make a difference that you can promote and you can view uh, yourself in a certain way. And present this, the vision of yourself to the right audience. So basically you are like a CEO of your own company, your own person, like brand called me. And then you can control the way that people can see you. And at the same time, doing it in a very unique way, being very authentic, that people instantly know who you are. And then I discovered, of course, that brand, like a first originated from, um, you know, the, many, many years ago in ancient times uh, when people had cows and there were the herds of cows in the field. And some cows were quite special. They were better. They were giving more milk and they were better quality. They were kind of few cows there were just outperformed others. They were special. And so the farmers, they were put uh, some mark on their horns, on that, on the cow. And the mark is was originally called brands. They were branding the cows. So they were special cows. They were special because they were branded. And that's how the idea came from. So the clothes with um, the companies, how to stand out, how to tell the world uh, that you promise, it's a promise to deliver something that valuable. <laughs> that, and then that's how you brand yourself. And that's what uh, people are doing with their personal brand is the same thing. You just mm-hmm. brand yourself a certain way to basically declare the world that you have value and yeah. then you have a mission and then uh, that's you promise to deliver something and you're doing it better than anyone else. That is the reason why they should be working, engaging and doing things with you rather than thousands of other people who are doing the same thing. Somebody is just starting out. I mean, what are they focusing as a brand? Branding is like the word marketing. It can be such a big thing that they don't realize. So yes. what would a beginning person do as a newbie entrepreneur? I yeah. assume when you say branding, are you saying like color schemes? Are you talking about their behavior or how they post on their, uh, what social media platforms that they're on? Or what is it? Just the details. You know, when uh, you build a house, then you need to build a basement first. You need to have uh, the first your the branding, the platform the initial set of things. First of all, you determine your goals, why you need the brand. And that sometimes we need, we go through this process of rather uncomfortable questions. What is your weakness? What is a challenge for you? What are you afraid of doing? So you need to really get out your, how do you define yourself, who you really are? And then we do all this work together when um, I ask people to describe themselves in some adjectives, how they see themselves. And then we ask uh, their customers or their colleagues, uh, people that know them well, to describe them using exact the same 10 words. What words 
are similar, then we circle them together to determine like what exactly then the 10 words become three. What is the core of your brand to see what things that initially you and make sure that everything that you do, it complements, it adds value to this core because with a color, with the logo, that's also, this, this is the uh, steps It is something that doesn't make any sense to start with. And that's what a lot of people think. If I just make a fancy logo and the website or then just do this um, totally like this fun, great things that make myself look better, this is not the way to do it. Because first of all, you need to, it's a lot of self-discovery. You need to find and determine who you are. It's basically the same way as you are preparing a meal. You need all the ingredients, first of all, what the, what the main ingredients, and then the strategy. What goal, what do you want to accomplish? To make sure that everything that you do serves that, you know, you kind of, everything that you do, you're moving in the right direction with all their strategies. The tone of your brand, the voice of your brand, what people are talking about you, what testimonials you're getting, are they complementing each other or they're conflicting? Because if you have a conflicting messages, then you don't have a brand. Because imagine if you have uh, even uh, the car, which have a wheel from Mercedes and the engine from Rolls Royce and their cheers are from Toyota and put it all together, it just doesn't make any, make any sense. This car will not go anywhere. So to uh, create a brand, you have to be consistent. And also what the other challenging part that well, my, a lot of people that I work with uh, see that it's the ability to say no. Because in a lot of times, we're facing so, lots of opportunities that some are serving our brand and some don't. And when we're trying to engage in so many different activities and people offer us money and then you're doing this, this, and this, a little bit of everything, then you're not being consistent. Then it's it's challenging to learn to say no to some things if it doesn't serve your brand in the long run. And to know who you are and to stick with your value, with your goals, and uh, be patient and knowing that you will be rewarded for all your efforts. And I have seen that where people are inconsistent yeah. or they do send the confusing messages because they're, they're, okay. they're trying to take, uh, please too many clients, try to attract too many clients, not realizing that the, that's, that's doing them a disservice. Because exactly. Imagine a restaurant that serves pizza and foie gras and sushi and Russian borscht and so many other things, basically everything. So you will not want to eat in this restaurant because that means they're not good at anything in particular. Because if you want the pizza, then you go to the best pizzeria and that's where you get the best uh, product. So what exactly, what specific you want to be known for? Uh, kind of cut, you know, that make your niche more specific and put all your efforts towards that. Well, that's, that's very good to say that because if you're too diversified, then yeah, you're not going to get, you're not going to go anywhere. Yes, so. exactly. So that's, uh, is truly uh, fundamentally important for people to realize that. Could you explain what all things does, does your company, which is called World Brand Company, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, what are all the services that you actually provide to your clientele? Because yeah, I know mm-hmm. you have a partner as well. Yes, and because branding goes hand in hand with design, so we're a branding and design company. So we also create logos, uh, we create websites, brochures, presentations, uh, and everything, the, the visual part as well, but that's why we work together and coordinate our visions. Because uh, in the business, it's fundamentally important to have the same idea, the same values. That is a big part. So I develop the personal branding strategy. I do the writing part, all the speaking, all everything that is required for, to, from the person to get from point A to point B to their goals. And with my partner, and she does the 
image and design. And she's also an artist, a very talented one who makes a beautiful uh, vision and representation of the brand to make sure that uh, this image is beautiful and attractive towards the audience of our clients. So, okay, so how long you guys been in business together? Uh, we know each other for quite a, a while. We worked together while working with the, the various artists. Um, and uh, so we started a company uh, earlier this year, so made it official, but we were working uh, together before. So that definitely brings the sense of like a family together. So because a lot of things we don't even have to explain to each other. So it's, and that's what I believe in, like having a value. It just happens very naturally. It happens very organically. So we decided to just start a business, which is new for both of us, because we both have some valuable background in our professional life. And then we just join our efforts and we can see now how we can maximize the value of everything that we do. It's truly uh, difficult, hard work to do everything on your own. Because mm-hmm. nobody is good at absolutely everything. You just have to be doing what you do best. And I, I know I've said that quite a few times on this show is, uh, is doing joint ventures or doing partnerships or doing mm-hmm. something like that. Because like Anna just said, you're not going to be an expert at everything. Like she does the creative side while you're doing the, uh, the, totally. the, the journalism side. So she, yeah. she picks up on areas that you're not the expert in and, she, and, and you pick up areas that she's not the expert in. And, exactly. and it's a great symbiotic relationship. Yes. To make a great website, you need both the visual representation and the content as yes. well. Yeah, the, the copy. You no, know, for me, I mean, I can do a lot of the, the WordPress design for a website, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just not very good at copy or mm-hmm. the content. Leave that for somebody else, right? <laughs> yes. Well, and just have to make sure that the person can truly know what exactly you're doing. You know, you are well, you have to find the best language the best, as a tool to describe in the best possible way that it resonates. Because with the words, with uh, the t- choice of language you can truly make a great difference it's just because now people they also they uh they know facts are very important to that they're accurate but also the choice of words it has to resonate it has to be emotional and that was a really big challenge for me to learn at the journalism school but then once you have a lot of practice doing the writing every single day then gets better easier and sometimes you just have to really just feel truly the personality to be able to express their value so the audience would know to uh, where to go for what they need and to kind of immediately click and that's what you know and every brand you know you have to make sure they have three factors it's know like and trust that you're known well in your industry that people trust you and then people like what you're doing which is true that it's impossible for everybody to like you, but people who like you, they really, really like you. And they become your fans, and then they bring you lots of uh, other people and clients. Well, I was told this even back in the 90s when I had my very first mentor. And mm-hmm. essentially, he says, when you start developing enemies or people that don't like you, then mm-hmm. you know you're doing something right. Because if you try, if you don't, if you're trying to please and you are pleasing everybody, you're not making any changes or you're not making any strides. You're not, you're not growing. But when you, when you have those, uh, when you have that opposition, you're beginning to make a difference. Now, I'm not saying go out there and start hurting people because then people, are all, everybody's going to dislike you. But I'm just saying, you know, you, you've got to take those risks. You've got to take those challenges. So, yes, snap. No, like I trust you, but also you also need to be unique and different. Absolutely. It is so very true. So if people are talking, then they, what they say, if people are talking behind your back, that means that you're ahead <laughs> and <That's a> good <laughs> that you are actually doing something valuable because, well, it's a rule, rule number one in all the PR that it's, there's no bad publicity. And, you know, people, sometimes it's a lot easier for people to criticize others and then to do, take risks and do everything themselves. And that's the rule of this in the business and in uh, everything that you do. I just realized sometimes you have to make sure that the, actually, the result that uh, delivering it, it's a lot 
better than, than perfect. It's actually just bringing it and doing it, it's more important. Because if you polish everything till perfection, then sometimes you'll be waiting for a very, very long time, and that is not going to happen. So well, sometimes a lot of people are just taking these risks. There's a gentleman by the name of Tom Wilhite. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the founder of a personal growth company called PSI Seminars. Started that back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, in his book, Pathways to Freedom, uh, he wrote about, he joined Toastmasters and he became so good on stage, never, never an um, never an ah, none of those mm -hmm. hesitation words that when he started presenting in public that people started, he was so, so polished that people could not, did not believe him. Mm -hmm. so he had to actually go back and start to deliberately become unpolished just so that people would actually start taking him seriously. Yeah, yeah, because that's it, it actually... sound natural is what it was. Yes, it's definitely worth being be more human. And mm -hmm. that's how we connect to people by uh, just showing our true unique self. Yes, because a lot of um, if the personas, people that, trying to do to create this to be too perfect then immediately people think they're not real because perfect is sometimes is associated with uh, being fake i'm going to be the a true testimony to what anna just said there if you're listening to the uh, to life's little lessons of uh, the second season which is the inter the i call it the interview season mm -hmm. go back and listen to the first 10 episodes I, and i'll guarantee you there's not going to be a single breath in the in any of the things there's no breathing there is no ums there's no us there's no you knows all of that was taken out and i was going to a podcaster's uh, meeting and that's when they started saying you need to leave some of that stuff in because it needs to sound natural when it doesn't say when it sounds too clear then people may not believe you so definitely <laughs> listen to any of those first 10 or 12 uh, episodes i think the last one that i did was a uh, robin eckersley so she was one of the last ones that i was very adamant, making sure everything was clean. That's when I started, you know what, let's make this a little bit more natural. So I will go and polish up the show a little bit, but not so much like I did in the first few episodes. To me, it sounds better, but to the audience, it may sound a little bit, like you said, it was a little bit fake. That's absolutely true. Very, very uh, important to still being able to express yourself, but connect to the audience. Mm -hmm. And since you're already there and doing your show, that already means that you're like doing outstanding work and taking a risk and doing more than anybody else is doing, which is a totally new level. And that's already uh, absolutely impressive. Well, thank and you. Well, I, I started this show in October, 2017 for the second season mm -hmm. on an interview based show. I know we're right around the 60th episode. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where you, what part you're going to be launched at, but you're right around the 60th episode. Wow. And it's been, it's been well, it's, you know, for, for, you know, for doing this for a year now, that's, you know, that's a lot of different interviews and just starting off with uh, a lady by the name of Daniela Molina. She was in, uh, South America when I interviewed her at the time. So that's my first one out, outside of North America, which that led me to going over to Europe and Russia, which led me to you. And, and it's, you know, it's, been, it's been a phenomenal ride over the last uh, year. Yes, very impressive because that's what, it's a big learning experience also for both sides, I believe. And uh, it's great that you were able to connect with so many outstanding people who are doing amazing things and they work. And it's an honor for me to be a part of this and honor to be invited to uh, talk about what I do because, well, you, uh, you bring the, well, the value out of each person which multiplies and uh, it's a great opportunity to reach to the different audience to um, just kind of bring value to, because now it makes it, well, it's possible to be on a show, even you don't have to really be on television as it was before. So you can have your own uh, broadcast, your own media where you are CEO and that's exactly like you can make absolutely everything the way that you see it, which is beautiful. Well, thank you, Anna. I appreciate that. Um, as we're starting to wrap up our time here, if somebody wants to talk to you about branding or talk to you about building their websites or things like that, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, the easiest way is just to go online, go to our website, worldbrandcompany.com. 
or there's an email, info or anna at worldbrandcompany.com for questions, comments, for everything. Then uh, you can find us on social media. We have the uh, same Instagram account. We have Facebook page uh, that we constantly make updates for the tips, for things that uh, we also, the value that we share. Um, then we connect with people that we are already working with and we form lots of partnerships for the mutual, for the value that we give, for, for, for provide to each other. Yes, please go online, find us and... That's, we love to make the difference and uh, see how we can help people to craft or create their very unique and very powerful personal brand and make people more successful and enjoy their life better because that's exactly what personal brands, they allow you to do. That's a lot right there. <laughs> <laughs> so the, so those you have to go to worldbrandcompany.com. I'm on the website now. It's a beautiful website. I see both your, yourself mm-hmm. and your partner, Vera, I guess is her name. Yeah. Yes, Vera Khodakova. She's, she's Russian. She's based in <laughs> Moscow, but she's also tra- traveled all over the world. She'll be in New York uh, early next month. We'll be working some projects together and attending some art galleries. Very much looking forward to it. When there's two creative people get together in one place, then that's where they're, where that's, we can work a lot and we never feel tired. Never. Actually, that's what we know just for the entire year that we've been working together uh, closely. We, like, there's a, such a great support in everything that we do, great support to each other. And if you, even if you're tired at the end of the day, it's a different kind of tired. I remember one of, my, one of the quotes from a gentleman by the name of Vince Lombardi, mm-hmm. uh, which was the coach of the Green Bay Packers back during the first year, couple of years of the, uh, the, of the initial Super Bowl I and Super Bowl II. And mm-hmm. I don't remember the exact quote, but he said, well, there's, there's no greater feeling than laying on the field exhausted knowing that you gave it your all. Absolutely. So very true. I mock and that, that resonates a lot. Yes, because uh, instead of working eight hours a day, sometimes you need to work 16 hours a day. And you're so happy doing that. And there's nothing else that you would rather be doing than uh, making the difference in your company, in your brand, They're basically just playing by your rules. And it's been extremely rewarding. So we'll see what's next. We are very much, we're a new company, but we are very much excited doing what we are doing. We're proud of the results that we already have. And uh, we're very inspired working with so many talented, like hardworking and really amazing people of their business. They're already achieved a lot in their career. And now at the point when they need to redefine themselves or present their work to the world. And that's what we are so happy and so honored to do. Those of you that are watching the video, you can see the energy just coming off her, her, her face and smile. That's absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I think that's a really great pleasure. That's, that's what, what, what you feel, what you experience when you're doing what you really love to be doing. At some point in time, you are going to be needing some branding advice. I would say definitely give Anna a call. And just go to worldbrandcompany.com. Uh, world, world WBC. I think it's just the easiest. It's say like WBC. WBC. It would be good if you, could get, if you could get that URL. Absolutely. <laughs> World Brand Company. Thank you so much. And uh, well, I would highly cannot recommend watching your show enough to absolutely everybody. Just, I've been watching so many different episodes for over the last really past two months. That was a lot in the background. And that was a lot of inspiration. I cannot think of anyone like a better host of the show than you. Because it's a great energy that's, you know, the like attracts the like. And that was what happens here. It's a lot of positive energy that just spreads in the world. And you do make a really, really great difference in uh, your work, in uh, promoting people this way. Uh, and it's just a pleasure of in-depth conversation that doesn't happen that often in our lives. So I'm just happy to, uh, to share that with you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you very much.
And it's been great having you on the show. Everybody out there, definitely check her out. Also, don't forget to go to KevinADunlap.com, which is my website, which I help people with their business coaching. And mm -hmm. definitely go to the podcast page so you can see some of the other interviews that Anna was just re referencing to. If you're not on that website, you're on iTunes or St Stitcher, whatever, go ahead and follow our show. Uh, we'd love to hear, also hear some comments that you have about you know what you uh, like or dislike about the show because we always start. I'm always looking to improve, so this always has to be positive. <laughs> uh, any last words, Anna, before we go? Uh, just thank you so much for incredibly great questions and for just really helping me like every single time we talk i always discover something uh, for myself that i could be better at that's something i can express better or there's direction that i want to be going next and this was absolutely great experience being in a show answering your questions, a very interesting uh, question that made me think about something new that I haven't probably thought before. So I'm very grateful to you for that. And thank you for everything that you are doing and for your show. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks you uh, all. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit KevinADunlap.com, Facebook.com slash KevinADunlap.author, and on Twitter at Kevin A. Dunlap. We'll catch you on the next episode of Life's Little Lessons.